Tonight it is my very great pleasure to introduce Laura Foster. This is not Laura's first appearance at Broadway Books, and we hope it's not her last. Her previous books were Portland Hill Walks and Portland City Walks. I can personally vouch for the excellence of these books. As my husband and I, over the course of one year, did every single one of the hill walks. And so far we've done about half a dozen of the city walks. We have lived in Portland for 40 years and discovered more about the city's neighborhoods and history from Laura's books than from anything else, more than we thought possible. And not only history. We learned about architecture, social customs, flora, fauna, and more. I remember hiking through several luxurious Portland neighborhoods in the Southwest Hills and my husband saying, he knew there were rich people in Portland, but until we did these hikes, he thought there were only about 12 of them and they all lived on the same street. <laughs> so now we are thrilled to be celebrating the Portland Stairs book. This book offers intriguing and heart-pumping ways to take in the considerable charms of hidden Portland treasures, public staircases that exist all over the city. This guidebook will tell you which staircases are the best for mountain views, for portals into the city's history and stories, and for vertical urban adventures. It covers more than 10,000 stairs. We are so glad to have Laura here tonight to talk about her book. Please join me in welcoming you, Roberta and Sally, for yeah. having me again. It's nice to be here. I love this part of town. This is where, I, when I first landed in Portland, I lived in Northeast, so it's my favorite. Um, oh. Is that going to work? Well, let's see. That's, it's kind of fun to be in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> kind of Halloween -y. Yeah, I think it's good. Okay. Okay. Um, so there's a slideshow, and a lot of those photos are in the book, but they're in color, which is nicer. And uh, if I, can you see in the back? Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, good. And I'm not going to talk about them individually. They're just sort of um, for atmosphere and. Uh, there was, it was so fun to take those photos, that, and pretty much all of them I took about a year ago, October of uh, 2009, with the deadline approaching. There's seats up here if you want to... Okay. So a little preface about the, the backstory of this book is that when I first proposed a book um, to several publishers back in 2002 or so, I wanted to call it Portland Stairwalks because I was just crazy about all the staircases we had in town, and I'd seen the Little Red Book of Stairs, which was self-published by... Um, Stefana Young in the 90s. It's out of print now and it's worth a lot of money, so if you have a copy, hang on to it. And anyway, um, so I, I uh, researched some of my favorite stairs are in Washington Park, the old section of Washington Park that dates from the 1870s and it has these wonderful decaying staircases. And then the neighborhood above it is called Arlington Heights. So I, there was a lot of geological information and architecture and history and um, you know information about uh, the trees and David Douglas and how he died in a cattle pit in, in um, uh, Hawaii and that's where Douglas Burr comes from. So I just had all these wonderful things. So anyway, Timber Press said, yeah, that's a good idea for a book to weave all these things together in walks, but we don't think anybody's going to find stairs very intriguing. And so they said, let's call the book Portland Hill Walks. So that was, the Port Portland Hill Walks uh, was really supposed to be the stair book, and it is the stair book. It has lots of staircases in it. And so this book it's my third book from them, and I wanted to publish this myself just because I thought, well, they're not interested in stairs, and I still am, and I, um, they have the right of first refusal for any books, the ideas that I um, have, and so I had to present it to them, and they were crazy about the idea, so they published it, <laughs> and I didn't get to self-publish, but that's fine because um, they did a great job, as they always do, and so... I will. I want to read tonight a little bit about it, talk a little bit about some things that motivate and inspire me about walking around here, and then uh, just highlight a few here and there places in the book. So let's see if I can get this to work with the microphone. So this is, this is the introduction that I wrote. What's to love about a staircase? In, in prehistory, the thrusting of human feet into a steep hillside resulted over time in a series of vertical footholds. These first land stairs allowed early peoples to traverse and inhabit new terrain. We're still building and climbing outdoor stairs for the same reasons. Portland's topography, where peaks of up to a thousand feet rise from near sea level, means that stairs are often the best option. Where roads cannot go, a public staircase frequently does. 
The most stair-rich neighborhoods are on the west side of the Willamette in the Tualatin Mountains, known more familiarly as the West Hills. East of the Willamette, in northeast and southeast Portland, the changes in grade are more gradual, so stairs are less common. Notable exceptions are Alameda Ridge, an ice age deposit of gravels and cobbles, and two volcanic features, Mount Tabor and Rocky Butte. Their stairs are dramatic and extremely scenic. North Portland, a biker nirvana, is frankly under-endowed in the stair department. Many of Portland's public staircases were built in the era before cars. As the city grew in the early 1900s, land was developed further from downtown, and new neighborhoods were not viable, economically, unless they were connected to town via streetcars. As a result, streetcar lines crisscrossed the city, and when a new development, such as the Alameda or Westover Terraces, was planned, residents needed a quick way to descend from their hillside homes to a streetcar line. Even today, at the bottom or top of many hillside staircases is a bus stop, a vestige of the streetcars and the stops associated with them. Mid-century, staircases were built to re help heal rifts in urban neighborhoods as thoroughfares such as Front Avenue and McLaughlin Boulevard were built, cutting off vehicular access to intersecting streets. There are many steps from this era in South Portland, in the Lair Hill area. Uh, the stairs allowed pedestrians, at least, to continue on long-used transit roads. I first fell in love with stairs when I left flat Chicago land and attended college in Dubuque, Iowa. Dubuque is a Mississippi River Hill town in an area bypassed by the glaciers that dragged the topographical interest out of the rest of the Midwest. Sunday afternoons before diving back into the books, I would wander around town looking for a likely dead end that might harbor a staircase down the river bluff. Stairs, I had discovered, were a good refuge from the wailings of REO Speedwagon that pervaded the dorm. <laughs> I just dated myself there. <laughs> when I moved to Portland in the 80s, I began exploring my new town. One day I encountered a staircase ascending from Northeast Wisteria Drive at the base of Alameda Ridge. I hesitated. There was no one around to ask. Is it private? Where does it go? When caught trespassing, I've had good luck with the ignorance defense, so I took that first step up to investigate. 117 steps later, I felt pretty sure I was not on private property, and I found that things looked different up there. Bigger houses and broader views, and that same sense of discovery, intrigue, and delight still greets me at the foot of every staircase. There is something ineffably other about a neighborhood staircase. It's not a road, it's not a trail, or a multi-use path. A staircase is a tangible concession that no indeed, roads cannot go wherever humans might want to carve them. Their slightly subversive, escapist nature attracts urban explorers, runners, walkers, and anyone else who cannot comprehend how mall walking could be a pleasurable activity. <laughs> the City of Portland's Office of Transportation maintains a list of stairs, and so I use that um, to build my own list. Um, and my stair counts vary quite a bit from theirs, and I think mine are probably a lot more accurate because I'm sort of a stickler for details. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, and they, they maintain the stairs. Uh, if you live adjacent to a staircase, you're not responsible for its maintenance as you are your, a sidewalk that runs across the front of your property. Partly because staircases, of course, more complicated um, it, it, when they start to decay, but also because there's a lot of infrastructure running under them, um, gas lines and power lines, water lines, things like that. Um, and as an aside, there's um, <clears throat> once there's, well, one of the things I love about staircases is uh, their marginal quality, and I'll talk about marginal qualities and what I love about Portland in that regard. But, uh, you know, you're walking down a city street, a neighborhood street, and, or driving or biking, and it's kind of this unified facade of houses, and there's a house and a driveway and a yard, house, driveway, yard. And you can't really penetrate it, you know, unless you're invited into one of those houses and you get to see things from a different angle up higher or down lower or... Uh, but a staircase just it's like this magical zip line that goes right through that facade, that fabric of the neighborhood, and you get to you get different views from up higher. And as you climb, the, the views change, and you get to look into backyards and see the creativity. People, you know, that's one thing I just love about walking is that it always restores my mood if I'm in a bad mood. It's just the creativity exhibited by people in their properties. Uh, or the beauty that they've created, um, or even just some of the quirky things they've done. Um, and my favorite quirky thing is in Willamette Heights, and I don't even know if it's still there. It's not actually Willamette Heights, it's, it's on Wilson Street at about 30th or so. And I was walking in this neighborhood, and the homes were not spectacular, and the views were not good, you know, you're right next to Giles Lake Industrial Area. But this house um, was a, maybe a 50s tri-level house, had, so it had a, um, a chimney that had been faced in wood, 
um, and then somebody had turned that chimney into a climbing wall. And so there was a three-story high climbing wall on the outside of this very nondescript house, and it just made me laugh so hard and, you know, cured whatever was wrong with me that day. So you know, San Francisco has, a, if you go down there and um, you to explore, I think the best way to explore it is with this book called San Francisco Stairway Walks. It's been around for 30 or 40 years. And the woman who wrote it is maybe in her 70s or maybe even 80s now. And she came up to Portland last year with her son. And they, she wanted to meet me. And I was so tickled. So we went on a walk. And she was just like I thought she would be, just delighted at everything and going into backyards and peering over. <laughs> <laughs> just so curious. So endless curious. And um, they have over 600 staircases in San Francisco, where we have about 200. Oh, and the thing about the, the city staircase list is neighborhood stairs. They don't include park stairs that, or um, public stairs within buildings like I did. Or, yeah. So how has writing books about walking sort of changed what walking is like for you? Like, can you just go for a walk and not be looking for a story? <laughs> not alone. I don't, I don't, whenever I write any of my books or um, I do some book, uh, I write and put things up on a blog now too. And then, Anyway, I have to do it alone because if I'm with a friend or my husband or somebody, um, I'm just as blind as the next person to what I'm passing through. It's just, I don't see anything. It's just amazing. So I go alone, and then I, and then I interact more with people. Um, so I, I guess I have figured out that I prefer to walk alone if I'm going to explore. And if I'm just going to visit, I don't, you know, a friend is nice. Yeah. Yeah. Do you take it dog I take my dog now. I, I inherited a pit bull from a daughter who thought that was a good idea to have a pit bull. And that lasted three months, and then um, now it's mine. And so um, homeless people love my dog. I just get so many nice conversations with homeless people over the pit bull. So that's kind of opened up a world to me that I didn't um, previously visit very much. And uh, let's see, what else about walking? Walking alone. I talk a lot to landscapers in neighborhoods like Portland Heights. They're kind of quiet. People are working. And um, their kids are doing enrichment activities. So there's no one there except for the landscapers. So they're nice. They always, it's, like, it's like seeing a cat on the road or something. You know, It's like we're so glad to see someone out there. You know, mm -hmm. I cut the cat or I chat with the landscapers. It seems like it's sort of um, the friendliest neighborhoods, I think, are on the east side. I really enjoy my walks on the east side more. I feel like there's more people out, just you know, kind of, um, taking advantage of the urban scene. Mm 